Hello again guys, Gazio back again here and welcome back to another video. We're going to do things a little different. Today we're not going to be doing a character review, but we're actually going to review all the three star weapons and put them into a tier list on how practical they are, whether or not you should use them or raise them, and how useful they are from early game to late game. Of course this is all opinion, so this is not a definitive tier list, this is just what I think. Feel free to comment on your suggestions down below, but without further ado, let's get right into it. Now with three star weapons, obviously we know that they're really easy to summon. If you do mass amounts of multis, you can refine them pretty easily so getting r5 three star weapons is rather easy to get some of them are worth keeping some of them are worth throwing away let's get right into it now first off we have cool steel now cool steel just increases your damage against hydro and cryo characters and as attack percent this one's a pretty straightforward weapon it's not too bad uh, it's not good late game, but it's very good early game for replacement when you're trying to just get through early game content. This is really good on Kaya. This is actually the one I <laughs> used on Kaya. I had him on my team for quite a while, though it's not necessarily a good weapon though. It's enough to get you by. I think that's where I put that in C as it's not necessarily something you want to keep, but it's definitely something you could use very early on. The effect can go all the way up to 24%, so if you are running any cryo or hydro character, this is... Definitely just a little damage boost that's going to help you on through that early game to like level 20 or whatever until you get a good 4 star weapon. Uh, or until you get a craftable weapon. The elemental ones, I think all of them are going to go into C tier. They all have the same effect. Next up we have Dark Iron. Upon causing overload, superconduct, electro charge, and electro infused swirl reactions, attack is increased by 20% with a elemental mastery main stat. This one is also not too bad. This one will just get you by. This is a good, you know, just starter three star weapon for Kaching. Only time I see you guys using these three star weapons is if you don't have a replacement yet. So yeah, this one, specifically Electro, also going into C, nothing too crazy here. This can go all the way up to 40% increased attack with Elemental Mastery main stat. So that's actually pretty good just by having a Elemental Reaction. So easy 40%, not bad, not bad. You could honestly use this with Animal Traveler, if you have an electric user on your team, you get an Electro Swirl, Animal Traveler just gets the increased attack for 12 seconds. On top of that, since it's Elemental Mastery, it's going to be working really well with other units, so once you get that attack increase, you can just use different Elemental Reaction. Good Animal Traveler sword in my opinion. Next we have the Filet Blade. 50% chance to deal 240% attack damage to a single opponent can occur once every 15 seconds, so pretty much like Prototype Aminus and the Frost Burial Weapons, that it does a certain amount of damage every few seconds. This can go all the way up to 400% which is fairly high in my opinion. This weapon particularly I think this is the best one we have so far as this works with any character. You don't have to have a specific element. This is pretty much universal. So far nothing crazy. This isn't any like top tier weapon or anything. These are just weapons that can get you by. Uh, if anything I'd say it would be in B tier. I think B tier is going to be our work with every character type slot. With C tier I'm going to say it only works with certain characters. B is it works with everybody. So yeah great small prototype Aminus type weapon. Now next up we have Harbinger of Dawn. Now this one is pretty good in my opinion because so early game crit rate is kind of hard to come by. Crit rate and crit damage is hard to come by. And with Harbinger of Dawn, you get 14 increased crit rate when your HP is above 90, up to 28% increased crit rate, which is pretty fat in my opinion. Now, if you're able to keep your health up, which it, it isn't too hard to get your health above 90 or early game, it's not like they're doing any big massive damages, and if you have a healer, it's pretty easy to get that back up. So having that flat 28% increased crit rate is just really, really good. On top of that, you have the crit damage, could get you up to 42% increased crit damage if you level it to 80, but let's just say 40, because... Honestly, I think 20 to 40 is like all you should level up these 3 star weapons to. So 26.3% crit damage, as well as 28% increased crit rate, that's just flat stats that's going to help you increase your damage a lot early game, even mid to late game, if you still don't have a weapon. By then you should probably get the battle pass weapon. Uh, I've seen some videos that this weapon actually works really really good on Albedo since he is a sub CPS. If you put this on him he's going to always have that increased crit rate and crit damage because it's not like he's going to be on the field so the blossoms are just going to be having the extra bonuses while not risking any of his HP going down. Sub DPS's this is going to be very very good. Honestly I want to say this is S tier. For now I think I'm going to put it in high A. We'll tweak the tier list later, but I think this is a really, really good weapon. So Harbinger of Dawn, one of the greatest weapons that you can put on any sub-DPS. Next up we have Skyrider Sword. Using an elemental burst grants 12% increase attack 
and movement speed for 15 seconds this can go up to 24 percent increased attack and movement speed this one's kind of trash i'm not gonna lie i mean you could use it on your healer i mean i guess you can use this on your support because it has the energy recharge this is once you use the elemental burst you get increased attack and movement speed as i don't think if you did run this on your support it wouldn't necessarily do anything because why would you need attack and movement speed unless you have unless you need like gene or something well if you're just using it for the energy recharge then that's fine as for its effect it's not necessarily the best pretty sure you're better off just picking any of the other weapons so sky rider greatsword i think this is going to be our first infused weapon early game you should just focus on damage don't worry about all this energy recharge and old spamming and anything like that honestly early game just get high stats you should be fine you should be able to tear through the game because it's not too hard last but not least for these swords we have traveler's handy sword defense percent elemental particles restore one percent hp and you could get up to two percent hp uh, this is trash. This is not not even a discussion. This is garbage. This is literally just fodder right here. Don't even this don't even touch this. This brings no value whatsoever. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to Claymores. Next up we have the Blood Tainted Greatsword. Increased damage against enemies afflicted by Pyro and Electro. Again, these ones are gonna go into the same tier as C. We're gonna drop that next to the cool steel as they have the same effect. No need to go in depth. This one has elemental mastery up to 24%. Next we have the debate club. After using an elemental skill, normal charge attack on hit deal an additional 60% attack damage in a small area, effect lasts 15 seconds, damage occurs once every 3 seconds. So this one is kind of like Animus again, just in an area it just does damage. So this one I would say is a little better. This one does have attack percent. Honestly anything would just flat out straight damage increase or just increase attack damage is one of your better options. Again this is a universal weapon, non-situational, you can just use it. It's always going to do its effect. This can go all the way up to 120% attack damage. Keep in mind this is a DOT, so 120 every 3 seconds, lasts up to 15 seconds anytime you use your elemental skill, normal when charge attack. Not sure if I read that incorrectly, if I did just let me know in the comments below. Next up we have Ferris Shadow. When HP falls below 70%, increase charge and normal attack damage by 30% and charge attacks become harder to interrupt. Now this one, it's a little iffy because the effect is definitely really really good. Its main stat is HP, so that's... <laughs> one issue unless you're trying to build hp i don't think this is a necessarily good weapon if we go down the hp threshold it goes higher so you just have to lose less health and charge attacks become 50 percent so again this weapon the effect is really really good the only situational thing is the hp percent if it was attack percent immediate a tier b tier but since it has hp I may have to drop this in infused tier because you would probably get more DPS out of debate club simply because it's attack percent and flat out attack. That, that's our main goal when it comes to finding out what weapons are good is what brings the most benefit to the team. Next up we have Quartz. Upon causing an overload, melt, burning, vaporize, or pyro infused swirl reaction, attacks increase by 20%. Elemental mastery. Again, this is similar to the other weapon. So we're going to put that here similar to forgot what this one was but it was the same thing but with electro this is gonna go up to 40 percent except we have sky rider greatsword on hit normal and charge attacks increase by six percent for six seconds max stack six occurs once every 0.5 seconds physical damage increase and this can go up to 10 percent so up to 40 percent now this one I am going to have to put this in A tier. Now, let me tell you why. Let's say, for example, you're building a Noel or a Razor. This would be a really good option. One, physical damage increase is a good stat. And two, just an easy 40% increased attack damage, literally for just fighting. So if you're running a physical damage Claymore user, this is a very, very good option. Once you get like a prototype Aminus or something like that, then you could probably replace it. But even then, honestly, this is not a bad option, especially R5. For level 40, this can go to 24.6% physical damage. And as for 80, it can go up to 40 percent which is still very very high skyrider greatsword good option to pick last but not least we have the white iron greatsword defeating the opponent restores eight percent of hp this can go all the way up to 16 percent this one is another infused weapon not good might as well just get a healer no need for all these on kill effects and it's also defense percent so another infused weapon next up we have the black tassel increased damage against slums by 40 percent up to 80 percent no brainer option infused here not good at all <laughs> Next up we have Halberd. Normal attacks deal an additional 160% attack damage, 
attackers once every 10 seconds can do up to 320%. This one is probably A or B tier because this one is a really good option on Zhangling. Honestly, I want to put it in A tier. This is very universal, has attack percent, easily refinable. I think this is just a great option just for flat raw damage output. It has the same effect as the Filet Blade pretty much where it's like you do damage and every so often you do an extra amount of damage. I think for now, We'll put it in B tier. No, we'll put it in A tier. I think I think this is a really good weapon. Again, what we're looking for is just straight raw attack increase, and this does exactly what it needs to do. We don't have many pole arms, and this is the last one. Increased normal attack damage by 24%, and it could go all the way up to 48%, and it uses crit rate, so this one, I believe, is A tier. In fact, I think Halberd should be in B, and White Tassel should be in A. I think this is more useful, because again, crit rate and normal attack damage, this is, again, perfect on... Zhangling, very good option, because yeah, getting crit rate is relatively hard early game, and the normal attack increase is also really, really, really good. Now imagine if you had this with a retracing bolide set with an extra 40% increased normal attack damage under a shield. So running this on Zhongli, if you're really low level and you want to build physical DPS Zhongli, you could. Sure, it's not the best, but if you really wanted to, then this is a really good option. Or if you want to just run Zhangling and put a shield over her, just the same effect if you want. Onto the bows, we have the Ebony Bow, increased damage against Mechanoid Ruin opponents by 40, could go all the way up to 80. So this one, another infused weapon, not good, very situational. This is just not good at all. <laughs> Next up we have Messenger, crit damage, charge attacks on weak points, deal an additional 100% attack damage, as crit damage can occur once every 10 seconds and it can go all the way up to 200%. This one is a B tier. I don't put this in A tier, is because some enemies, I don't think they have a weak spot. I'm not sure if every enemy has a weak spot, but some probably don't, or if they do, it's probably hard to find. Unless you have high crit rate, or you know where their weak spot is, then this would be good. Otherwise, it would be hard to land the crits, if you're fighting like rune guardians or you're just headshotting people, this is a really good option because again, increased crit damage is always good. This can go all the way up to 28.5. For level 40, it can go all the way up to 17.5. So increased crit is always good. Again, this is damage, not rate. So keep that in mind. Next up, we have the Raven Bow. And this one's like the other ones. Increased damage against opponents afflicted by Hydra or Pyro. It can go all the way up to 24%. We're just going to quickly put that into C tier. For more universal applications, go with anything in B and above. Next we have the recurve bow. Defeating the opponent restores 8% HP. HP main stat can go all the way up to 16%. This one is absolute garbage. Throw that away. Next we have Sharpshooter's Oath. Increased damage against weak spots by 24%. Crit damage and this one goes up to 48%. So this is pretty much the same as the other one, but instead you don't get that increased bonus actually. Honestly, I think Honestly, Sharpshooter's Oath is probably better as the crit rate actually goes higher. This one goes up to 40% at level 80 and 26.3 at level 40. So this one, definitely a better option. I think I'm actually going to drop this down to C and then move Sharpshooter's Oath up to A for your bow option. Because again, this is weak spot dependent. So the reason why it's not an A is because sometimes it's hard to find the weak spots or you don't know where they are or i still don't know if all enemies have them but if they do i definitely put this in a tier for now we'll keep it at b and last but not least we have slingshot normal and charge attack hits within 0.3 seconds of being fired increases damage by 36 percent otherwise decreases it by 10 uh, and it could go all the way up to 60 percent increase and it has crit rate main stat honestly i'd say this is an a tier weapon only if you want to use the combo attack in fact we'll just put this at high b because the 60 percent increased damage is really good the crit rate is also really good but again this has to be within 0.3 seconds of a shot already being fired. If you're using your spam click with the bow users, this would probably be good. If you're just using charge shots, this would probably be a bad option as it will just decrease your damage. For those who are wondering if this works on child, no, this does not work on child. This stance does not take the 60% increase damage. Keep that in mind. But for the combo, this is very good. It's good to keep it at ranged. Or if you want to go into your charge shot mode and then just try time it to 0.3 seconds, then that would also work, but this, this is good only for the combo attacks. I'm not sure what application it would be good on. Definitely a good option. Last but not least, we have the Catalyst. This one is the Amber Bead. Normal attack hits increase all elemental damage by 6% for 6 seconds, max up to 2. This can go all the way up to 12, so 24% increase elemental damage. This uses elemental mastery. This one is a solid A tier, solid A tier, because Catalyst users typically support or utility just in 
Getting that raw increased damage and raw elemental mastery for comboing, for example Sucrose, this would definitely be good. I'd for surely recommend this for any elemental mastery team, or just as a starter weapon until you get anything better. But offensively, this is not a bad option. Next up we have the Emerald Orb. Upon Vaporize, it'll get charge, Frozen, Hydro Infused, Swirl Reactions, increased attack by 20%, up to 40%. This one, we're gonna go ahead and put this down at the same tier, down in C, right over here, with the same effects. Same thing with the Magic Guide, it does the same thing with Hydro and Electric, we're gonna put that also in C. Otherworldly Story, picking up Elemental Energy Orb, Particles Recover 1% HP, Energy Recharge, and this has 2% HP. This one is garbage, do not even try. Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayer. HP main stat, when switching characters, the new character taking the field has their attack increased by 24% for 10 seconds. This effect can occur once every 20 seconds. Up to 48%. This immediate S tier. Why? Because it does not matter what level this is, it does not matter who you run this on. Literally, pop this on a character, switch out to your main DPS, instant 48% increased attack. That's how good it is. If you put this on a Barbara, one, you get the HP main set. Of course, you get the increased healing because it's based off our HP. Two, whenever you switch, let's say you pop the E on Barbara, then whoever you switch to, one, they get the heal over time. Two, they just get that fat 48% increased attack. Like, what's good with this is this is very good on any support. It doesn't matter what level because the buff remains the same. The buff is always going to be a buff. And it's not level dependent. Honestly, if you have a level 1 Barbara with a level... 1 Refinement 5 Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer, you still get the 48% increased attack damage, which is very very good when you're trying to maximize your DPS. Highly recommend on any Catalyst user that you're using as support, maybe not so much like a Sucrose or anything like that. You could if you want to, but honestly I think this would be a very good option on Barbara. So our first S tier weapon, definitely a good option. Last but not least, we have Twin Nephrite. Crit rate, defeating an opponent increases his movement speed and attack speed by 12% on 15 seconds. This one is, honestly, I'd say a solid B tier. Crit rate is always good, and movement speed and attack speed, especially if you're going for a DPS catalyst user, this is not a bad idea. Honestly, you could run this on Ningguang if you don't have Solar Pearl or any of the 5-star weapons. So yeah, we're gonna do some last minute tweaking when it comes to these. Um, so there you have it, our final 3-star weapon tier list. Everything down here in the infused tier bring nothing to the table. These are things you should avoid at all costs, they're not good at all, don't even, don't even touch them. The bottom four over here have the same effect, where it is the increased attack damage based on the affected element, so in this case this one would be Pyro and Electro, and then this one right over here, this one would be Cryo and Hydro, so th that's what these four items are over here. The three above that have the attack increase based on an elemental reaction. These ones are just a little bit better and can work with more of your team as you create some synergy with the elemental mastery. Everything in B tier are universal and can be used on any character. These are all attack directed. Many of them have similar effects to Aminus where when you deal damage you do a certain amount of damage as attack damage like Filet, Blade, and Halberd. Others have increased crit rate or crit damage on weak spots, specifically the bows. More specifically on the A tiers, this catalyst allows for some really good elemental reactions, really good synergies with other characters. Unlike these weapons down below, this one can work with any element instead of just a particular element. For the passive, this one just increases their elemental damage, so just a good straightforward weapon on catalyst users. Same thing with Skyrider Greatsword, you can get a max up to 40% increase attack with the physical damage main stat, very good. Again, straightforward damage with Claymore users, unless you're using like a D Luke or something that infuses your attack. This would be good on say like Xinyan, Razor, Noel. These are just really good options for DPS. White Tassel is just a beautiful weapon. It increases your normal attack just straight up and it also has crit rate, two really good stats that are hard to come by early game and it's just easy to get them. This is a really, really good one on Zhangling. This is an amazing option. Arbinger of Dawn, one of the best sub DPS weapons. You're going to get that increased crit rate and crit damage when your HP is above 90, which is usually all the time as long as they're not on the field. So this is a very, very good albedo weapon. Just a very, very good option. Your HP is not going to be going under 90 because they're not going to be on the field. Get up to 28% increased crit rate as well as just 40, 30, 20 crit damage depending on what level you have it. Last but not least we have Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayer which gives you that fat 48% increased attack. Literally on the passive, doesn't have to be leveled up, doesn't have to do anything, could be level 1 on a level 1, still get that 48% increase. Best way to maximize your damage. Honestly you can even use this weapon late game, level 40 or 50 or whatever, this is not 
terrible, this is something you can definitely use. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. I'm open to change my mind with these weapons. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.